All right, perfect. So thank, th thanks, Jake. Thanks, Meredith, uh, for letting us know you can you can hear us and you can you can see the slides. That's that's brilliant. Thanks for the feedback. Okay, so um, hello and welcome everyone to today's webinar. Thanks for joining. Um, just before we get started, I just want to let you all know that everyone is on mute to cut down on the background noise. So if you want to ask any questions during the session, uh, please please do ask the questions, but just submit them into the little question box. Uh, you should be able to see on the webinar control panel. And then all being well, towards the end of the session, we'll have a bit of time to, to answer those questions for you. Uh, okay, so um, today uh, we're going to be looking at uh, what I think is a really interesting area of enterprise social media, which is all around how, how about you as a marketing or social media professional can go about setting your goals for social media and the right roles and responsibilities uh, for everyone, everyone within your organization who is involved in the, in the delivery of social media. No two organizations are the same, so it makes sense that there isn't a one-size-fits-all approach when it comes to enterprise social. Uh, so today we're going to be exploring some of those different approaches and structures uh, that you can adopt for your own organization. My name is Dan Aston, and I'm the Marketing Manager here at Crowd Control HQ. And I'm delighted to be able to say my colleague and founder and CEO of Crowd Control HQ, James Leavely, is here with me today. Thanks, Dan. Uh, hello, everybody. Thanks, James. We'll hear a little bit more from James later um, when I start to, to quiz him a little bit on uh, some of the questions on, on today's topic. Um, I can see there's quite a few familiar names on the, on the session today, which is fantastic to see our community joining us. But if you're, if you're not that familiar with Crowd Control HQ, in 30 seconds, so we're the UK's leading social media management and compliance software platform. And we're built specifically for enterprise organizations. Um, we're an entirely UK-based organization, so the development team, customer service team, sales teams are all here in the UK. And uh, we offer uh, social media software and also supporting services and training and mentoring that, that goes with it. And uh, we work with many of the UK's best known uh, public and private sector organizations. So before we get stuck into the details of the session today, I just wanted to take a quick look at some of the common challenges that we see organizations are facing uh, today um, and that relate to the people that are actually delivering social media. And um, what we tend to hear from these from the organizations is, you know, they're not sure about the best way to structure their social media presence. Um, you know, sometimes a little bit unsure about exactly who should be involved in social media. You know, should it be the marketing team or should it be expanded to customer service and uh, sales and HR and, and those kind of things. Um, and also a little bit around, you know, how do you manage the risks of increasing social media adoption when you're getting more and more people uh, involved. So, uh, uh, James, would you add anything to that list? Uh, I think also, I think, yeah, for a lot of organizations, it's... Um, you know, how do they collaborate with uh, potentially a, a marketing agency? Yeah, well, yeah, makes sense. Um, so then let's have a quick look at some of the key drivers uh, you know, which pose the challenges facing many organizations today. And what we're seeing, um, there we go. Uh, <laughs> what, we're, what we're seeing is organizations are really increasing the number of social media accounts uh, that they have representing the organization. There's more and more users that require access to these accounts, and they, they can be both inside and outside the organization, actually. And with the increasing popularity of social media for, for communicating, I mean, it's no wonder that the volume of conversations about the organization or the brand or its products and services is really, really ramping up. Um, and, I, and I suppose, finally, social media is used by more and more departments within the same organizations, which adds a lot of complexity, actually. Um, so one of the biggest challenges is how social media is considered by many different organizations, especially by the senior management and the executive teams, I would say. Would you, would you agree, James? Yeah, Dan, I think you know, it's probably really important to note that I think that for many you know, senior managers, they, they think that social media is free um, and probably don't give it the time or respect that it deserves. And I think it's probably worth noting that social media is free 
at the point of entry, but we like to say, but beyond that, it's a serious business. You know, there are risks that need to be managed and it needs to be resourced in the right way with a plan linked to the organization's kind of overall strategic objectives. Mm, very good point. Very good point. So then at this stage, actually, it's probably worth introducing the term you've heard us use it, which is enterprise social media. Um, James, do you want to explain that one? Yeah, so we, so we came up with a definition. Uh, I'm not going to read it out, but just kind of reference a, a few points, really. I think complexity within the organization is driven by the number of people across various departments. Yeah, we will cover this in, in more detail. You know, but even organizations that have a relatively simple structure, you know, maybe including their marketing team, customer service team, and maybe even their marketing agency in the delivery of social. And that's at least kind of three people or, or teams. You know, and that really needs to be coordinated. You know, for most organizations, they have multiple audiences that take an interest in their social media activity. So you've got pr press, maybe local community, prospective customers, current customers. If they're a listed company, then potentially the city. If they operate in a regulated industry, so the regulator will be involved as well. And then you've got suppliers and other stakeholders. So when developing a plan, identifying the audiences is absolutely key. And yeah, the final point to mention is around efficiency. You know, the adoption of new channel, cha channels and new technology usually creates efficiencies. But sort of social media has come along and, and set us back by probably about five years mm -hmm. by forcing us to move towards kind of manual processes. So in many organizations, you know, we see marketing teams being kind of having to create almost like a social postman, you know, where comments come in on social media um, that then need to be responded to by other people around the organization. You know, so they're cut and pasted into emails, wait for a response, which may or may not come back. You know, and this creates real inefficiencies, um, which really needs to be tackled before social media become a, can become more mainstream uh, a channel for most, you know, for a lot of organizations. So it's all about putting in place the right building blocks, creating a platform from which your marketing, customer service, or digital team can grow the use of social media across the organization in a, in a controlled and coordinated way, you know, in order to deliver the organization's objectives. Right, so, so you talked about building blocks there. Do you want to elaborate on what the building blocks are? Yeah, so, so I mean we, we started to uh, identify the sort of building blocks that really need to be in place in order to, to deliver enterprise social. You know, it's not, you know, we, and we looked at the best practices from, you know, from many of our clients, you know, across multiple different sectors. And, um, you know, these are just a few of the organizations that, that fed into this best practice. But, but actually what, what we created was something that we uh, call the respect model. Um, you know, using the knowledge that we learned over the last six years, um, we, uh, I mean, some of this came from the best practices that organizations put in place uh, when they were adopting and delivering enterprise social. And actually others came from the issues and challenges that they faced you know, when they looked at what would they have done differently. Okay, and it, it's probably worth mentioning here that there's very few bodies of work that have uh, taken place or that, that consider uh, what needs to be put in place in, in this way. I think it's because many organizations are doing enterprise level social media for the first time, so they're, they're kind of learning as they go. Yeah, I think the most important thing to understand here is that these have to be treated like a major change project. You know, it's not just about setting up the channels, training a couple of users, and then asking people to start being more quote unquote social. <laughs> so, so then coming back to the model, I mean, do you want to talk through the whole model today? Uh, I think, A, we don't have time. Um, so 
but actually I think that uh, so so you know today we're really going to kind of focus on I guess a number of key areas. You know, this is around kind of team collaboration, um, roles and responsibilities, and then also just kind of some of the key considerations around setting objectives. Okay, and then just just for everyone's benefit who's, who's joining us today. The respect model you can see here, it will be touched upon in our future um, webinars and events as well. So, you know, it's a, it's a good uh, resource that we'll, uh, we'll cover a little bit more uh, in the future. So, oh, this is a nice slide. So, who's involved in the delivery of social media? So, again, I think, you know, in the early days, it was really down to just kind of comms and marketing teams, but, but we see this changing quite rapidly um, with so much kind of rich information available on social media. Yeah, there are more and more teams that can take advantage of this medium. Um, I think, you know, in, in some instances, you know, there's a number of departments uh, that might need to be involved in getting the project off the ground. Mm -hmm. um, but fundamentally, you know, I think uh, we've got marketing to deliver social media campaigns, customer services to answer you know, customer queries, pick up any issues or any complaints, you know, sales to pick up, um, you know, prospective uh, customer opportunities, HR to promote and manage career opportunities, um, you know, if you, depending on how you've got your social set up, it may be that you've got local teams engaging with very localized content. And then you've also got regional managers maybe to, to oversee their local teams. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's quite a few people involved in, in, in the delivery of enterprise social. So then would you say that this, uh, this mix uh, changes depending on um, how social media is structured in your organization or the, or the type of organization uh, that you're a part of? Yeah, that's exactly right, Dan. Uh, you know, it really depends on the sector, how the organization is set up, and what is the most efficient way to structure you know, who should be involved uh, in order to deliver what the organization wants to achieve. You know, so there's plenty to think about. Yeah, the, the slide here really um, uh, shows a, what we would consider to be a multi-site organization. You know, it could be like an automot automotive dealer group, you know, or even a leisure chain, or a retailer that has quite a local um, engaged audience. You know, where each each local centre you know, has its own social media accounts, you know, as well as a full set of corporate accounts to address its kind of national um, audience as well. Okay. So, so if an organisation has local centres like like the slide shows, then they should set up social media accounts for, for each one of those. Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> I think the, you know it's I think you said earlier there isn't a one size fits all. Yeah. Um, I think the organization needs to decide what's best for them, you know, and, and some of that will be decided by the current resources available, but also, you know, whether or not that is something that the customers want. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, key considerations here around kind of brand dilution, um, skills maybe that are available at a local level, you know, whether the audience is predominantly local or national or a mix of the two. So, so the, man, the management of like this number of different accounts is that is that an issue that you need to, need to consider as a, as an organisation or as a marketing manager? Um, no, I mean I mean if you use you know, platforms such as Crowd Control HQ, then you can manage you know, hundred, hundreds of accounts just as easily as you as you can two accounts. Hmm. Excellent. Um, so then it's probably worth actually looking at. Um, Sort of the opposite end of, of this this model. Um, did you want to walk through that one, James? Yeah. So the, yeah, this example here is um, you know the organisation has a central set of accounts representing the whole organisation. You know, even though they operate through four distinct regions, each with marketing and customer service teams. Okay. So then, are there any rules that govern what might be? Uh, the best setup for an organisation when, um, you know, when this would be more appropriate or the previous version would be more appropriate. I think you know, in this example, the product or service being offered, you know, maybe doesn't really fit with local engagement. 
I mean, the, you know, maybe the audience has the same requirements regardless of where they are geographically, and maybe the emotional attachment to the brand may be pretty limited. You know, therefore, it doesn't it, it doesn't make sense to set up very local accounts. I mean, a you know, good example of this would be someone like Tesco's. You know, that actually, me personally, you know, I wouldn't really think that I wanted to have a a local social relationship with my you know, with my with my Tesco's. However, I still may want to raise particular. Um, I may want to see special offers, or I may want to see uh, raise particular customer service issues, yeah. and that I do that through a, a, a main channel. Yeah. You know, either way, you need to build a plan. Needs to be resourced in the right way, and define the roles and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so one thing I'd say is, you know, we've, we've just seen. Uh, there could be potentially many different teams involved um, when it comes to enterprise social media. And uh, the, the, the word cloud you see on the, the slide here, you're looking at this list, you can see just what a range of different um, activities it can be. Um, and what you realize is actually these are activities, but they, they then filter into people's responsibilities, you know, members of the team. Um, need to ensure that these are accounted for you know, in, the, in the team. And just picking a few out here, you know, thinking around, okay, who is it that's creating the content, generating the content, and then who is it that's actually approving the content? And often it's a different person, you know, within uh, larger teams. Um, I mean, especially, uh, it's probably worth saying there, Dan, but especially when maybe you've got an agency working yes. with a, a client because... Absolutely. You know, we see this in, it works in two ways really. Sometimes the client produces the content and the agency uh, sign it, signs it off and actually and, and puts it to, to play in, in, in within their campaigns. And other times it's actually the other way around. Yeah, very, very good point. And then it's also things like who's handling the customer service inquiries. You know, is that marketing or should it be customer service? In which case, you know, they need to be responsible for that. In terms of the social media team, and then you know, other things like compliance and governance. You know, you need to consider these things. It's not just create your accounts and you're away. You, know, you need to be compliant, especially if you're a large organisation. Um, so, so all of these different activities, you know, they need to happen, and actually they help form people's responsibilities uh, of the individuals that are delivering the social media. Um, and when there are many different teams involved. Uh, and many different activities, as you can see. How do you divvy up who does what to ensure that there isn't any duplication of effort and you know, you're not missing um, any of the activities? Yeah, so uh, I mean, the example here shows um, kind of in-house delivery um, with some agency support. So you know, here what we what we're trying to to show is that you know, you're pretty much just mapping. All of the activities. You know, this isn't the, uh, the the complete list, but all of the activities down the left-hand side, together with the departments that are responsible um, along the top. And so, you know, I mean, here we show that the marketing team are responsible for the majority of activities, but with support from a number of other departments. You know, so so local teams generating content, customer service teams uh, managing customer service inquiries. Um, you know, I think it, it, it's really important to, to make sure that uh, each, all of the activities are mapped um, back to individual, um, individual individual departments, so that nothing is um, you know, so nothing is, is missed. Right. So so then um, so then, what about the organisations that are maybe you know a lot, a lot or the majority of their Social media is handled externally or outsourced to to an agency. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's sort of almost it's exactly the same. You know, just the allocation of who does what is just pushed onto the uh, the agency. Um, you know, I think in this example, you know, the organisation doesn't really need to identify you know, what best practice looks like. You know, or provide any internal social media training. You know, or maybe even have a policy that relates to managing um, corporate 
social media because obviously the majority is um, is done by the agency. So then I can see security and compliance. So why is that still the responsibility of the the organisation's own IT team? Well, I mean, you know, fundamentally the the agency are using the organisation social media accounts, mm -hmm. um, and therefore, so things like password security, you know, and, and and how access is provided, really should be the responsibility of uh, you know of the organisation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, so then, I suppose it must be a, a hybrid model between doing mostly in-house and doing mostly outsourced? Yeah, there is, you know, we're seeing this more and more, um, I mean, actually you'll see not not only is the agency in this example um, actually doing more and more, but some activities require um, real collaboration. You know, I think in, in terms of uh, you know, sort of you know where the agency is 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 crafting content, um, but then actually so could um, the organisation as well. You know the organisation is handling sales inquiries, and so re really, um, you know, responsibilities are split. And I think that's where these types of models make it um, really important to see to make sure that all of the different elements you know are mapped and allocated to you know. A department or uh, or the organisation mm -hmm. makes sense. I mean, so how how do you make it work? How, how do you ensure that um, each of the the activities here and the, and the departments or the, the users, you know, how how do you make how do you make sure you're not duplicating efforts and that you've got everything everything covered up? Yeah, I mean, you can take you can take the uh, the kind of maps above, and I think that um, every single person who's involved. With social media, on behalf of the organisation, you know, it really needs to have their kind of roles and responsibilities and their activities, you know, written down and detailed to be able to identify you know, who's responsible for what, what interfaces they have, what service level agreements um, you know, need to be in place. I mean, for example, you know, I mean, you know, we talk to to kind of many clients and many agencies where. You know, that sometimes there's a bottleneck between one or the other, whereby um, just around getting content signed off. Mm -hmm. So it's about saying, okay, we will submit this by you know, a certain date, yeah. and actually, in the expectation is that either the client or the agency or, or somebody who maybe has to approve that content um, actually has to do it by another date. So the process works in a really efficient way. You know, the template above. Really, just shows that you know you can capture all of the, the kind of primary and secondary um, responsibilities, so that you know you can really get different departments sort of working seamlessly mm. together. Yeah, I like that. That's, that's a nice template. <laughs> I like that. Um, is there anything else then that you can start to think about putting in place, in addition to using templates like this, um, to ensure that you're not adding more work to to the um, the collaboration piece, you know, between the different different teams and different uh, individuals. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I think you know, we, we talked earlier about the. Um, so we we talked earlier about uh, you know manual processes and things like this, and I think you know it's also really important to have the right tools in place yeah. to enable that um, collaboration. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter whether you know the, it's just the marketing team working with the customer service team, or or you know one or both of those working with an agency, or an agency working with various clients. Um, you know, I think workflows ensure that the right content is routed through to the right team uh, for action, and this can be done either manually or or using automation. Um, you know, it also makes sure that there's a central view. Over who is dealing with what and what items are outstanding. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Um, so we talked about how you might structure your teams, um, how you can define the responsibilities and the, and the roles. 
Um, so what else do you need to put in place to ensure that you're, you're heading in the right direction, so to say, with um, enterprise social media? Yeah, so sort of a final piece for, for me really is um, setting objectives. Um, you know, I mean, everyone's heard of you know, the acronym SMART when it comes to, to setting objectives. Uh, and I think that um, you know, there's, there's always, you know, a lot of people tend to concentrate on, you know, get fixated on the kind of social media metrics or the vanity metrics. You know, such as likes, you know, or, or followers. You know, they're often big numbers, um, and, and ones that are pretty easy to, to understand. But I think the big question here is, you know, what are you actually trying to deliver, yeah. you know, with social media? Because it has to support the delivery of the organisation's overall goals and objectives. Yeah. You know. I think you know, and it should be there to deliver real results. You know, so whether it is sign up 200 more members by a certain date, whether it is about increasing website visits by so many thousand per month, again by a certain date, or, or maybe it's you know about positioning the organisation as the sort of number one for customer services in a sector. You know, through the use of of social media, and so I think you know I really think that um, we we get fixated on the vanity metrics around trying to do, you know our objective is to get a certain number of likes or to get a certain number of followers, um, and actually you know it's about you know it's kind of forgetting about those things and saying oh, yeah that, you know we'll, we'll acknowledge them, but the most important thing is what can social media deliver for the organization to help it achieve its overall objectives. Mm, yeah, interesting. So it sounds like, based on what you just said there, that there's actually potentially a bit of a misalignment with some organizations. Would you, would you say that's right? Um, yeah. So I, I think there's, um, you know, I think two, two different things here. So you know, one is about making sure that it's about delivering um, objectives for the organization but also I think it's also about the fact that you know there seems to be quite often a gap between what the organization wants to achieve yeah. and what the audience wants um, so you know to sort of highlight this probably worth sharing an example you know so the example here is a, um, is a bus company and the organization wanted to build its brand using social media. Decided to use a marketing agency to support this, you know, as the marketing team was already stretched. The agency was picking up on you know, new developments across the company. And they discovered that you know, this particular organization was launching a series of brand new buses with free Wi-Fi. You know, and therefore a whole social media campaign was set up around this. When it was launched, you know, there was a huge backlash with comments from unhappy customers about them wanting to have their buses. They didn't care about free Wi-Fi. Actually what they wanted was their buses to turn up on time. Yeah. <laughs> or when they asked a question, they got a response within a reasonable time period. You know, whether it's about service updates um, or lost property. You know, or, or even acknowledge it, or even acknowledgements when people were providing general feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, the organisation quickly took this on board and and started to you know restructure uh, their team. Started, you know, with a view to making sure that they responded to customer service inquiries, you know, within a within a reasonable amount of time. You know, the organisation then became proactive about pushing out messages around delays to services and they were able to do this not by recruiting an entire new team mm -hmm. but actually by utilizing their existing resources you know, I mean you know if we go back to the respect model actually what they did was they put in place internal training they started looking at uh, policies 
you know, and they developed best practice um, guides. But also what they were able to do was map the responsibilities of who was doing what back to different teams. You know, setting up SLAs and putting in technology, in this case Crowd Control HQ, to ensure that the collaboration was efficient and they weren't missing, you know, they weren't missing inbound um, inbound queries. You know, it, this also gave the organisation a great barometer to see how they were, you know, how they were performing overall. Hmm, interesting. Um, so, would I be right in saying that I suppose the bigger the gap between what the organisation is trying to achieve with social media, but then actually what the customer wants from that organization, um, the bigger that gap, I suppose, that the, the more is a bit of a, a disconnect, and then you, you ultimately, as in that example, some customers can become a bit unhappy about that. Yeah, absolutely, Dan. You know, I mean, we all know, I mean, social media is, is, is packed full of uh, people who are kind of happy to voice their um, <laughs> yeah. opinions, you know, when they are unhappy. Um, you know, and I think that social media enables that to, to be out amplified. Um, I mean, you know, we obviously we you know, yesterday we put a blog out around what happened with um, Velo Birmingham, mm -hmm. and actually, and the sort of backlash on on social media. Um, you know, and, and, and how it was and how that was handled. So, so we see this all. You know, we see this all the time um, about people sort of, in effect, getting it wrong. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any guidance then for people of, to, to to follow? I suppose when when they're setting their own objectives, try and try and minimise this gap between you know what they're actually delivering and what the customers are wanting or, or looking for. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, I, I kind of I think it's important to follow a simple set of rules, you know, when setting your objectives and and, and deciding on your activities. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I think it's it's just worth mentioning that you know pretty much every organisation will have multiple audiences, yeah. um, and in terms of putting plans together, you know, each of these audiences will need to have a plan, and it, before you can even do that, you need to understand kind of what their needs and requirements are. Again, I think you know, like we said. Talked about earlier, you know, start with business objectives. I think the biggest concern that a lot of execs and senior managers have with social media is that they don't really know what its purpose is. Right. You know, they they are so what they see is just a it's just another channel, um, and and I think that you know, if the, if people can see how it is delivering against business objectives. Then it will get greater support at a senior management um, level. I think the other one um, worth mentioning is around, you know, anticipating objections and um, and, and reactions. Mm -hmm. You know, do, I mean, does anyone remember the kind of the British Gas Twitter Q and A from a uh, you know a number of years ago? Well, funny you mentioned that, James. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't remember uh, the British Gas um, sort of faux pas uh, from a couple of years ago now, I think. Um, so, British Gas, British Gas, which obviously you know very good and well-respected brand, um, they decided to do a live Twitter Q and A um, with their customer services director, uh, and on the very same day, they actually announced. Um, a price increase, uh, which didn't go down particularly well, um, to say the least. So, so the live Twitter Q and A, which was um, supposed to be a way to sort of engage, uh, you know, their audience, their customers, and communities, um, actually ended up with a bunch of customers and also non-customers um, just taking to, to social media to, to, to voice their unhappiness. Um, and I would have shared some of these responses with you, but I think the language might offend a few people. <laughs> and so I think I think it's also you know, I think people what people tend to, to see is that you know, social media is full of stunts that uh, yeah. you know, that organisations are 
are doing, you know, like you said, to try and to try and engage, you know, with the, with their audience. Yeah. And actually, I think that you know what, and they're not really that thought through. I mean, you know, there's been, I mean, plenty of uh, sabotaging hashtags and and things like this. You know, McDonald's have been on the receiving end of that. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and many many other um, organisations. You know, and I think that so so anticipating kind of what might go wrong, you know, is is absolutely uh, kind of critical here. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably also worth mentioning that um, you know, we use the phrase you know, "what went well," um, and obviously the flip side of that is "what went not so well." You know, i.e., what could you have done better? And I think what this does it ensures that the learning loop. Is in place. You know, I mean, I mean, social media reporting is a you know is a whole separate area and, and something that um, you know, we we do cover um, and I think we are going to cover at future date. But but again, for me, it's it's kind of less around the the, the metrics um, that are just the mass metrics that are linked to social media, and actually the ability to say, okay. Um, with this particular campaign, what is it that we delivered? Mm -hmm. You know, how many complaints did we get? What was our kind of reach and exposure to those complaints? You know, have they all been dealt with? What were the um, you know what were our response times that related to those um, complaints? And I think and I think the um, you know, the 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 analysis and the reporting that gets done. Again, has to link back to business objectives. Okay, great, um, and that actually um, brings us to the end of the the formal stuff. I would say. So, I mean, I hope everyone's uh, still paying attention and listening uh, intently, and that you've, you found it quite interesting. I'd like to invite everyone, if you haven't yet, uh, to just submit a question because we'd be interested to really hear your thoughts, do you agree and disagree, or you know, do you want to drill into something a little bit deeper? So please, um, if you've got some questions now about the about presentation, just submit it into the little questions box. And I'm just going to take a quick look uh, to see if we have uh, some in uh, already. Oh. Okay, so. so, okay, so James. First one from Simon. What is the most re what is the most relevant social media metric? Well, I mean, I've you know, I, I, I guess like I've just explained, really, um, I think it really depends on what you're trying to show. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if we're just going to focus on, you know, I know I said a few minutes ago that um, you know it was about looking at what social media is delivering against real business objectives. I think if we're just going to concentrate on a social media metric, then for me, you know, especially if it's campaign related, then it should be around engagement. Yeah. You know, I think for me that engagement really shows that social media is doing what it should do, which is enabling that two-way um, dialogue mm -hmm. between you know, customers or prospective customers or, or the audience um, and the organization as opposed to just using it as a broadcast channel. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, another question here, so this is from Stephen. Um, we hear about these examples every day. So I get referring back to the British gas example, I presume. Um, but does it have a long-term consequence? Is it better to take a risk? Interesting question. Um, what, I mean, what's the, what's the phrase? You know, there's no, there's you know, there's no such thing as bad bad PR. Um, I, again, I think it all. I think it. I think it depends. Um, and you're almost, you know, doing as as long as you are, you know, identifying um, what the objections or the reactions will be. You can then think about, but what's the exposure that that we get? So is it going to be harmful to the brand? Mm -hmm. You know, um, and and is that short term versus um, versus medium term? Yeah. I think yeah. The other thing with that is, is it going to have a financial impact? 
of the organization. You know, are we going to potentially lose customers? Um, are we going to gain customers? You know, are people going to order more? Um, are you know what what what's the what's the consequences of that? And actually, if you can if you can try and anticipate that impact financially, then you can put a business case together which will hopefully get you to the right mm -hmm. answer. I know, I know I've sort of avoided uh, <laughs> it's giving a definitive, but um, but like all these things, um, it, it is a really it, it depends. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, another question. So, how do you go about putting the workflows in place? So, I presume um, about the workflow uh, screenshots that we we showed in the presentation. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, organisations um, who've been on social for a while um, will 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 have identified, you know. At where these, you know, which different departments, for example, um, need to be dealing with with which items, and I think so. You know, and you can build up that knowledge over a, a period of, of time. Um, you know, within Crowd Control HQ, you know, it's a relatively simple process. You know, the the platform understands the topics that are coming through, and then routes those through. Uh, those whole conversations through to specific teams, right. you know, and I think uh, as you mentioned earlier, we we do provide the the services, um, the configuration, and the help with setting things up at the start of the project. So actually, all of that work is done at the beginning um, in order to make sure it's a you know it's it's as efficient as uh, as possible. Yeah. Great. Some good questions. So please, you know, if you if you do have a question, please submit it. We still have uh, plenty of time to keep going, so we'll we'll just keep going uh, until there's uh, there's no more questions. I think. Um, so another question here. I'm an, I am an agency and want to know how I can work more collaboratively collaboratively with my clients. Okay, broad question, but a good one. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think again, this comes back to. Sort of building on the previous question, really, that the first stage is to kind of analyse um, the conversations that come in that you you cannot respond to. So things where you have to go back to the organisation in order to seek um, advice um, or 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 it needs you know, specialist um, attention. Uh, you know, you can then work out well which different teams need to be involved, and I think then you can sort of present this back to the client to say, look, you know, we've we've analysed the content coming in. You know, and I mean, Crowd Control HQ has a nice way of being able to report on um, on on different um, categorised bits of content. Mm -hmm. So you can present this with the volume of activity back to a client to say. Look, you know, this is what is currently being dealt with by us. This is what we need help with, um, and you can then, you know, you can then propose to them that actually you want, you know, the internal uh, teams of the client involved on a more permanent basis, and obviously, you know, a platform like Crowd Control HQ can then just facilitate that. You know, our our, our software doesn't matter or doesn't mind whether or not. You know, just the agency is using it, or it's um, the agency with a mix of their client, um, um, in order to make sure that you know things aren't don't get missed um, and people are doing the right thing. But you know, I think if we go back to the roles and responsibilities that we looked at earlier, again, kind of mapping those as well will actually help um, you know help make sure that the right people are involved um, in delivering. In delivering social media. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so another question. So actually about tools again. So how how can your tool help judge whether something really is a, a Twitter storm or whether it, it's five grumpy people <laughs> uh, and a, a lazy metro journalist looking for a story? Interesting question. <laughs> um, yeah. So so I think what what we are uh, what the platform can do. Is um, you know when when content uh, you know when content comes in, 
uh, you, know, you, you can see you, know, you can see the volume, you can start to see the, the themes, you can start to see um, actually the reach exposure that, uh, that a tweet has. So you know, therefore, um, not that you should be prioritizing things by um, uh, the potential risk to the uh, or reach um, for the particular complaint, but but that is one way to judge you know, how important something is. You can then obviously the, click on the, the user's profile, which will then bring up their bio, mm -hmm. which will actually then identify whether it was you know the lazy metro <laughs> journalist uh, or or whether it is a you know a, a genuine person. You've also then got the ability to see what other things that they're talking about at that time as well. So, so actually, you can see whether you know. So they complain to you. Um, you can see that they have maybe complained to British Gas, mm -hmm. and maybe they're a utility provider, or they're um, you know, or or they're just having a bad day, and you will be able to see that. You'd also be able to see all of the previous conversations that you have had mm -hmm. with that person to see whether or not um, they are a happy client, um, or whether or not they are a, um, a not so happy client. Um, and we do have some sentiment tools in there as well, which, which actually were, which then follows the customer around. So you know, so, so that would again give an indication. Of whether or not uh, of how you may want to, to deal with that particular customer and that particular question or complaint. Okay, interesting. Um, another question from Lindsay: um, What sort of benefits do you see for an organisation to support hashtags slash awareness days? I feel there is a, a habit of organisations trying to support everything badly rather than a few things well. Um, okay, uh, I think that um, I think really this depends on the resources that you've got available. So, um, so I think that if you if you are if you're a well-resourced team, then obviously you can pick pick more um, um, hashtags or um, or themes to support. You know. Uh, otherwise, you may just want to pick the ones that are most appropriate to your to your brand. But I think yeah, this comes yeah, it's, it's probably less a social media question and more a more marketing question. Mm. Then it becomes about brand alignment. So whether or not you, as an organisation, really want to be seen to be active with this particular um, hashtag or um, or particular awareness day, um, as opposed to um, uh, picking picking them all. I mean, obviously, you know, there were there were examples in in the past where people were picking up on on the wrong hashtags and mm. trying to promote. I think it was a habitat uh, one where they were picking up on the Iranian elections, right. so they were using a, a completely the wrong hashtag in order to promote their um, you know, buy one get one free on a sofa or something like that. And so, you know, and, and there was a huge backlash back to towards Habitat because, you know, they were seen to be jumping on the back of something which just wasn't aligned to their brand and, and really they just shouldn't have been there. Yeah, you can totally understand that. Um, so another question. Um, do you have any suggestions for how different members of a small team can share the role of uh, being a community manager? Um, and, uh, repeat the question. Yeah. Um, so, do you have any suggestions on how uh, different members of a small team um, can share the role of a community manager? I suppose all of them acting as a community manager, like maybe on a different day per week or something yeah. like that, but still having control of everything that's. Okay, I mean the 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 easiest. I mean, the challenge with that is um, that you've got different people um, doing the same job, and therefore it becomes. You know, so I so for example, I, I may finish. Uh, you know, I, I clock off on a um, on a Friday, 
Dan clocks on on a Monday, and so he really needs to know what's been dealt with um, and what's still outstanding. And I think that uh, so one of the best ways to do that, I mean, our our, our software really can facilitate that yeah. because it gives you a single view of what's still outstanding. Yeah. Um, notes can be put on individual kind of conversations if they are that are visible internally within the within the community management team. Um, and so what you are able to do is just really get a single view of who's doing what, um, what's outstanding, and be able to pick off pick up where the last person left off. Yeah. And I think you know, so you know, there are some rules and things that need to be put in place. Um, but again, those are processes which we would help with when um, when setting up the software with you. Great. Okay. So I mean, if there's any more questions, please do send them through. I'm just going to take a quick look to see if there's any uh, that we've missed. Uh, don't think there is, so unless there's any uh, any other questions to come through, thanks have been really interesting and great great questions uh, so far. Interesting to hear from you. Um, so I think James, actually, that's uh, that's about it. So that leads me onto our final slide here, which is just to say, you know, everyone who is still on the line today, um, thank you for listening. Um, if you haven't visited the, the Crowd Control HQ blog recently, uh, please do go and take a look. You know, we're publishing weekly uh, posts on there to try and sort of get you in, interested and engaged and educate around different aspects of enterprise social media. And uh, please, you know, do check us out on our own social social media accounts and give us a follow and just keep a keep a, an eye out with what we're up to. I mean, there've been a couple of questions today, um, you know, around around our software, um, and so it's probably worth just sharing that. We're going to be running some some monthly. Uh, well, there's, there's there's two options. If you if you want a personal tour of the software, we can obviously set that. We can obviously set that up. But uh, we'll also be running some more regular um, kind of drop-in sessions that we will email the dates round for, yeah. so that people can get get a flavour for how the software um, can help. Um, you know, it's, it's a you know 15 20 minutes. Um, um, sort of webinar for you know for multiple people, and actually, if there's particular points that you then are interested in after that, we can uh, we can set something else up um, at a later date. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thanks for your time, James. <laughs> I think it's been a good session, good questions. Thanks everybody for joining, and uh, I hope to see you again soon on a future Crowd Control HQ webinar. Great. Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs>